Hi there, you are watching a video of pressure vessels in industrial plants. The internal pressure is the most common loading in this type of equipment. For most applications, pressure vessels are either spherical or cylindrical. Depending on the application, pressure vessels will adopt one shape or the other. In a spherical vessel, the internal pressure is acting equally in every point. This means that the wall stresses will be the same in every direction. This is not happening in a cylindrical vessel, where due to the asymmetry of this shape, the wall stresses vary with direction. That is why a sphere is the optimal geometry for a closed pressure vessel in the sense of being the most structurally efficient shape. This could be explained looking closely at one infinitesimal element. In the cylindrical vessel, the internal pressure is resisted by the hop stress or circumferential in arc action, whereas the actual stress does not contribute. In the spherical vessel, the double curvature means that all stress directions around the pressure point contribute to resisting the pressure. That is why, for the same diameter and design conditions, the maximum normal stress in a spherical pressure vessel is one half as large as that in a cylindrical one. Therefore, the wall thickness follows this same relationship. With the aforementioned in mind, now we will review the equations proposed by the ASME code, section 8, division 1 for the shell. Due to the geometry of cylindrical shells, the required thickness for the shell will be the higher value of the hop and longitudinal stresses verification. The required thickness is a function of the inner radius, the design pressure, the joint efficiency, and the maximum allowable stress of the material at the same temperature. As previously described, for a spherical shell the distribution of stresses is identical in every point, that is why only one equation is used. The nominal or commercial thickness of the shell, for both cylindrical and spherical shells, will then be comprised of the following. Minimum required thickness due to internal pressure, the corrosion allowance, if required, the mill under tolerance allowance, and any other tolerance over thickness required. There are several types of heads or covers to close cylindrical vessels. Among others, the followings are included flat, torispherical, elliptical, hemispherical, conical, etc. Let's review the equations proposed by the code for these elements. Elliptical heads are the most used type. One of the main features is that the height of this head is exactly half the radius, which is why they are known as elliptical 2 to 1. The thickness required for elliptical heads is practically the same as for cylindrical shells. The variables intervening in the required thickness calculation are the same as in cylindrical shells. This type of head is used to contain large volumes and to withstand high pressures. The thickness required for hemispherical heads is practically half as for cylindrical shells. The variables intervening in the required thickness calculation are the same as in cylindrical shells. These heads are very similar to elliptical ones, where the height of the head is variable and normally lower than in the case of elliptical. Once again, the variables intervening in the required thickness calculation are the same as in cylindrical shells. The cone itself is just one element of the conical transition. In order to design this part, the following aspects should be taken into account. The shell thicknesses, due to internal and external pressure for both large and small diameters. The thickness of the knuckles. These elements are included to avoid overstresses in the area. 
the cone thickness itself due to internal and external pressure and reinforcement requirements for the cone to shell joint. In the following slides we will see the proposed equations by the code section 8 division 1 for conical transitions. For conical transitions without knuckles and with half apex angle less than 30 degrees, applicable equations are the same as for conical heads. The required thickness is a function of the inner diameter, the design pressure, the joint efficiency, and the maximum allowable stress of the material at design temperature. If angles bigger than 60 degrees are necessary, knuckles must be used in order to avoid large stress concentrations in the junction. This means using toriconical transitions. Once the required cone thickness due to internal pressure has been calculated, the cone to shell junction must be evaluated. If the conical transition doesn't have knuckles, there is a stress discontinuity in the cone to shell junction, mainly due to the effect of internal pressure and axial loads, caused by the self weight, for example. These loads could overstress the area, therefore, it is necessary to verify if reinforcements are required. The verification procedure is indicated in Appendix 1.5 of the code. In order to reinforce the area, the moment of inertia must be increased. By increasing the thickness of the components or by means of stiffening rings. As mentioned before, in order to avoid stress concentration effects in cone-to-shell junctions in pressure vessels operating at high pressure or with heavy axial loads, conical transitions with knuckles are used. These transitions are called toriconical. Knuckle radius will not be smaller than 6% of the diameter of the cylinder, or three times the thickness of the cone. The thickness calculation methods for this transition follows the same considerations as for transitions without knuckles, using DI instead of D. The knuckle at the large end is also known as flange whereas the knuckle at the small end is known as flare. The required thickness for the large end knuckle or flange is obtained according to paragraph 14D included in Appendix 1. A thickness calculation method for small end knuckles or flares it is not in outlined in the ASME code, section 8, division 1. An accepted design method to obtain this thickness is the pressure area method by Sick and Germain.